So the triangles that we are going to see in this new unit will no longer have right angles in them. They are not right triangles. Because of this, we can no longer use the Pythagorean theorem or SOHCAHTOA. So because we cannot use those two to help us solve these right triangles, I have to introduce you to two new types of formulas. We're going to look at the first one today. This one is called the Law of Sines. And you can see here that the Law of Sines consists of three fractions, but you will only use two of them at a time. When you're looking at your triangle and the information that's going to be given to you, you first want to find the triangle where you know both pieces of information. You know both side A and angle A, or side B and angle B, or side C and angle C. So find the fraction that you know both pieces of information. Then, of course, the other fraction that you will use will be the one for what you're trying to find. So we're still going to be solving triangles. We're just going to be using these rules instead of Pythagorean theorem and Sokotoa because those no longer apply. So when we look at our first of two examples, this triangle's been drawn up for us. So let's see, we know angle C is 47 degrees. We know side A is 12 feet, and we know that angle B is 67 degrees. So that means that we need to find angle A, capital letter. We need to find side B, lowercase letter, and side C, lowercase letter. So those are the three pieces of information we need to find in order to solve this oblique triangle. So... First, let's identify the information that we know both of. We know angle C, but we don't know side C. We know angle B, but we don't know side B. And we know side A, but we don't know angle A. So how do we know which one we should use first? Well, even though this is not a right triangle, from geometry you learn that all triangles add up to 180 degrees, regardless of what they look like. So we can quickly find angle A simply by subtracting 47 and 67 from 180. So in your calculator, 180 minus 47 minus 67 is 66. So now we know that angle A is 66. 66 degrees. Now we know both angle A and side A. So using the law of sines, we can use side A over the sine of angle A. So we know that's one of the fractions we're going to use. Now, if we wanted to find side B, then we are going to use the fraction that involves B. So we're going to use side B over the sine of angle B. So these are the two fractions we're going to use first to help us find side B. So we're just going to fill in the information now. So we know that side A is 12 and we just found angle A was 66 degrees. So we put that information in there. We are looking for side B and we know that the measure of angle B is 67 degrees. So there should only be one unknown in this proportion when you set it up. So now remember to solve a proportion, we just cross multiply. It does not matter which diagonal you multiply first. I generally start with the one that has the unknown. So I have B times the sine of 66 degrees equals 12 times the sine of 67 degrees. So I cross multiplied. Now to get B by itself, I'm going to have to divide by the sine of 66 degrees. What I do to one side of an equation, I have to do to the other. These will cancel. So now I can plug this into my calculator. Um, regardless if you have a physical calculator on online one, just double check really quick that your mode is in degrees because your angles are being measured in degrees. And we've learned that degrees and radians give you completely different answers. So in your calculator, you have 12 times, hit the sign button, 67, hit enter, divided by the sign of 66, hit enter. So now you know that side B it does not tell us how to round, so let's at least round to the nearest tenth. Never round to the nearest whole number unless you are told to. So 12.1 would be the length of side B, and don't forget, since side A had a measurement of feet, we need to put feet next to um, our 
um, measure. Again, on angle A, we put a degree symbol because both of our angles had degree symbols. That leaves us with side C. Again, we cannot use the Pythagorean theorem even though we know two sides because we do not have a right triangle. So we're going to have to do this process again. We can use the same first fraction because we were given um, these two pieces of information. But now this is going to change to be side C over angle C. So we'll have side A, which was 12, over the sine of angle A, which is 66 degrees. But now we're going to use the uh, information for C. We don't know side C. That's what we're looking for. Um, divided by the sine of angle C, which was 47 degrees. Same thing here. We're going to cross multiply. So C times the sine of 66 degrees is equal to 12 times the sine of 47 degrees. In order to get C by itself, we've got to divide by the sine of 66 degrees. So we can plug this into our calculator to find C. So 12 times the sine of 47, enter, divided by the sine of 66, enter. Uh, rounding to the nearest tenth, we get 9.6. So C has a length of 9.6 feet. And now we are finished because we found the three missing pieces of information. So we're doing the same thing we ended with on the last unit. We just have to take a different approach to it. Let's try one more example. So this time we're not given the triangle, we're just given the information. If you need to draw the triangle, you can. You can just draw any random triangle, label one angle A, one B, one C. It doesn't matter. You can set it up the same way that the top one looks. And then just write in the information, but you really don't need to. Because you can clearly see we need to know angle A, we need to know side B, and we need to find side C. So we actually are finding the same three pieces of information um, that we had to find on that first problem. That's just a coincidence. That won't always happen. Just like on the first one, um, it doesn't matter what type of triangle it is. As long as it's a triangle, we know that the angles add up to 180. So we can take 180 and subtract 48 and 45 from it. And from your calculator, you can see that angle A is 87 degrees. So you can still use that rule from geometry to help you find the missing angle. That does not change regardless of the type of triangle that it is. Um, side B. So before we move on, again, we see that we know side A and angle A. So we definitely we want to use that fraction again um, and then we want to use the fraction has B in it. So we have side A which is 7 over the sine of angle A which is 87 degrees equals side B which we're trying to find over angle B sine of angle B is 48 cross multiply so B times the sine of 87 degrees equals 7 times the sine of 48 degrees. And then, of course, we have to divide both sides by the sine of 87 degrees. So if we uh, type that into the calculator, 7 times the sine of 48 degrees, enter, divided by the sine of 87 degrees, rounding to the nearest tenth. Make sure you read the directions in the uh, assignment so you know how to round. Uh, we would get 5.2. This particular triangle has sides measured in inches, so don't forget to put inches next to your answer. Uh, doing the same thing for side C, we're going to use side A again. So 7 over sine of 87 degrees. This time we're finding side C. We're going to divide that by the sine of angle C, which they told us was 45 degrees. Cross multiply. and divide by the sine of 87 degrees to get our answer. So in your calculator, 7 times the sine of 45, that answer divided by the sine of 87. It gives us 4.956, so that uh, 9 will round the 4 up to a 5. Still write it with 10, so 5.0 inches and now you have your answers for that one. Again, it was just a coincidence that we were finding the same things on both sides, but regardless of what you're trying to find, you would set these up the exact same way. If you have any questions, I can uh, you can email me um, anything that you might have a question on. We can uh, do a Google Meet, whatever you guys need. Just make sure you communicate with me.